Okay, so, g'day, my name is Glenn, and today we are in the Cowbell Bapalif. So behind me, you can see that there is a much a hillside. It's made out of granite, and that is the pylon granite. So it is feldspar quartz rich granite, and it is part of a the Cowbell Bapalif, which is a very interesting Bapalif. So where I am now, basically. This is the Baton granite diorite. So you can see that the actual granite diorite is, doesn't have a high elevation. It seems to weather quite readily. But you look around the actual sides, not over there, that peak is uh, just sedimentary rock. But in between me, where the granite diorite is, and that peak is a contact zone. So that peak is actually the pylon granite and where I'm standing now is granite diorite. So this is a very interesting intrusion uh, because this baffle lift doesn't consist of just one intrusion, it consists of three. So we have the actual granite that was intruded first. That was about 370 million years ago. And then a few million years after, probably 367 so they haven't constrained the actual date on this yet uh, they've done various dating systems which we'll go over when we look at the PDF uh, but the dating is very flux so this one's intruded so the granite diorite intruded into the actual granite in the middle because all around the actual granite uh, oh all around the actual granite diorite is a granite ring. And that is consistent with all the way around. But there is another intrusion down south, Belle granite diorite, so that's a more coarse grain. And that seems to have overlapped. So it's come up, so there's been a fracture. It's come up, so that the actual feeder tube is down south, and it's covered some parts of the actual uh, pylon and the baton granite diorite. So it's covered both of them. And this is intruded into meta sedimentary rock. So the sedimentary rock over here is actual Silurian. If we go that way, so that's towards the west, then it is Ordovician. And basically, heading towards that way down south we have an actual fault zone. So that fault zone, okay, so that fault zone is a Mount Williamson fault. And because uh, this granite um, intrudes that fault, uh, the fault system, well, it happened before uh, the actual intrusion occurred. So there is no faulting on this baffle lift. And that happened uh, pretty much, oh, probably about uh, 380 million years ago when the actual mountain building was happening. So when this was in place, this was a high mountain range. So basically all the material that's been deposited here in central Victoria has basically been deposited. The mountain range is quite a few kilometers, 10 to 20 kilometers higher than it is now. And then 370 million years ago, to about 360, this was intruded. And ever since then, this has just been eroded. So a lot of these systems that you see here, uh, apart from what the land clearing that uh, Westerners have done, or white people, uh, a lot of it's old. So all these peaks have been eroding pretty much for yeah, about 370 million years. So it's basically on current understanding of geology. So over that way, that is going towards the east, we have the uh, 
Melbourne trough or the Melbourne zone and over this way down towards the west we have the Bendigo zone and even though this is a small road it's actually very busy and we have some uh, sheep over there New Zealand to housewives yeah, it's a very busy road very noisy so what I Anyway, what I intended to do, I just wanted to come here and have actually have a look at the actual rock. Uh, you can see coming from the west, it's actually going to piss down rain soon. Uh, so it's supposed to be pissing down rain right now, but obviously that's not happening. So I better get off this road, it's just way too noisy. So basically now, I'm just on the side of the road. In this, in this road reserve, we have the actual uh, pylon granite. This is fairly weathered, but what I can tell here is that this has large crystals of feldspar. It's they have a little bit of a pinkish colour. Uh, I'd say they're probably more like calcium feldspars instead of uh, sodium but I don't think there's that much potassium feldspar in the actual rock and so it's got a large venicris of feldspars and uh, has a lot of moss on it so this has pretty much been weathering out for quite a few million years and I don't see any quartz if there is quartz present then it's actually very minor uh, so this is probably a felt specific uh, quartz and I don't see much mica or horn blend even though they might actually erode or weather out a lot easier than the actual felt spars or the actual quartz yeah, so as you can see, this is fairly weathered material. So it's not really that good for sampling. Uh, and I would say a lot of the other places are probably not. So here's someone's old homestead. And around it, we actually have a lot of the actual granites. So we have granite outcrops all the way down there. But probably over where those trees are, past that, is... The actual granite diorite. So the Baton granite is heading towards that way. And look at that storm. Beautiful. So that's probably going to hit in a few hours. Actually, no, that's hitting in the south right now. Uh, so I'm probably going to avoid quite a, a lot of that rain myself because it's heading down south. But as you can see, the actual granites, because it's made of feldspar and quartz, it's quite more resistant to weathering than the actual uh, material that has higher horn blend and uh, micas in it, which seems to di disintegrate a lot quicker. So that's what we're actually seeing here. Okay, so basically the Baton Pluton, it's a monzo granite, Granodiorite and granites with a it's an eye type means it's igneous derived right, probably from the mantle uh, it's coarse grain with typical hypi now I don't know this word never heard of it before uh, the main minerals are quartz sodium plagioclase potassic alkali feldspar so, so K feldspar biotite and hornblende so and the plagioclase are oihedrals, subhedrals, so they're forming crystals. Okay, the early horn blend was evidently in the process of reacting with the magma to produce biotite. So that's probably you know, why there isn't as much uh, horn blend, because uh, it's all turned into biotite. Okay, and then it gives other information. So... So here I am at a car park, basically 
this is just a, a rest stop on I don't even know this road I need to actually put it down and we have large outcrops of the actual rock material so this is the Bainton granodiorite and what I see here is it's more an equigranular type of material so we do have we do have quartz which is a grey and then we have feldspar so this does have potassium feldspar so a lot of feldspar is uh, pretty much it can be pink then we have looks like we have horn blend and we have some micas so these are brownish micas so it is is a pretty fresh outcrop material so this is being broken on the surface we do have weathered material so this is not as weathered as the actual pylon material that we saw before but if we go over here you can see we do have you know, quite weathered material with um crushed basalt so obviously they deposit it here for the actual road uh, surfacing works and there's lots of caravans for some reason lots of tradespeople lots of full drives so uh, maybe we can have a look at this outcrop here so we have lots of black wattles we have lots of butterflies there should be snakes now the temperature was about 38 degrees uh, but it's actually cooled down so, here we actually, we have the top. So this is a large boulder, which has been weathered added material. So this is probably quite hard and it looks a bit pinkish to me. So it looks like this one does have a uh, potassium feldspar. You're not going to hear the lightning. Beautiful. And underneath we have a lot more fresh material and it has lots of graffiti on it so I don't know who uh, Tam, Tang is I like Tang so basically uh, because there's no fine material I probably can't actually get a sample to take home and my wife will be going Ooh. Hey, if I did take a sample my wife would be going, oh, that's a nice rock. That would look good on the garden. Then she'll just get in and go, Psh. off you go, go fetch. So there's lots of spider webs here. Yeah. So, thunderstorms. It's probably going to hit in an hour. Probably not even that. And it looks like it's pissing down rain over there. Up north. So I thought I was actually going to miss this. But obviously this changes quite a lot. So you can never take anything for granted. And currently I'm a four-eyed person. So I need glasses actually to close up. Uh, that's what happens when you get old. Okay, so here we have uh, material that's a lot easier to access. Obviously, looks fairly weathered. Uh, so that's not fresh. Although this is. But, obviously I can't take that home. But once again... What we're looking at here is this has a lot of horn blend and the micas are actually quite small so probably two millimeters or less and the horn blend gets massive probably up to five millimeters and there's lots of is it sodic feldspars but i don't see much of potassium so obviously they're probably a lot smaller crystals and then we have a lot of the actual grey 
quartz. So this does look like a granodiorite that they're talking about. So the actual quartz is a lot smaller than a than the actual granites. So this is the actual Bainton granodiorite. Go cats, yeah, go to hell. So, and another thing I've noticed is that with the Bainton granodiorite, there's not as much outcrop. So a lot of it is just really just, um, can't say what, a lot of it really is just rolling hills. And we might have some of the outcrop over there. So this is private property, you don't go over. But with the pylon, which makes up more of, so this is all Bainton. I'm actually in the northern part of the Cowbell Baffleif. So the pylons, because there's a lot more quartz, uh, it's a lot harder to web it out. So it forms a lot better formations. When you actually drive along the road, you'll notice that the actual pylon that sticks out inside the road which this one, the Bainton, obviously this is a very noisy road. So this is an exception, uh, this outcrop here. Normally this would probably be part of the farmland so you wouldn't actually be able to get access to it. And if we keep up going up north, we reach uh, just a normal sedimentary rock that we saw before. And that, that looks pretty weird. Looks like a mushroom. I actually quite like that. I am going to use that as the actual screenshot. Okay, so this is just a nice, beautiful field trip out in the field. You know, just looking at the Cowbell Baffle Lift. Obviously, I didn't get to the actual Belle uh Grano Diver which pretty much is the hills behind me. So, uh, the terrible weather is coming. Actually, we need it for the actual crops. So what are they using all this for? Well, basically they're using it for cattle and sheep. That's it. There's no, because of uh, the high quartz and feldspar content, it's not really good for crops. So, it's just for grazing. Although, if you do attend to it, you can actually use it for grazing. So what is the mechanism for, this is probably gonna be windy, so I think I'll record now what the mechanism is for the actual intrusion. 